Uh, aloha and welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. It's Wednesday. Mitch Ewan from the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute is your, I'm your host today. Our sponsor is the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and funding is provided by the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, who is my alma mater. So we have an interesting show for you today. We have two guests. We have Peter Rosig from HECO. He's gonna tell us the latest good news they have coming out of HECO, very good news. And I'm also very pleased to have my long-term friend, uh, Keith Avery, president of uh, West, uh, West Wind LLC. And he's gonna to talk to us about uh, wind turbines. But first, let's talk about the uh, successes at HECO from Peter Rossig. Peter, tell us your great news. Well, we're very happy. We've just reported the uh, RPS, Renewable Portfolio Standard for 2019. Uh, we reached 28%, actually 28.4, so we're rounding it to 28, but I think the audience of ThinkTech can handle a few, uh, a few decimal points. We had 28.4, up actually almost 2%, of 1.7% from the year before. So the year before we reported 27, actually it was 6.7. Uh, now we're reporting to 28.4. And the reason this is particularly exciting, and we're, st we're moving forward, that's always good news, but uh, we didn't have any geothermal energy uh, this last year, as we did not for about half of 2018. Had we had the geothermal energy available, we would have been at something like 32 uh, plus percent. And uh, our goal for the end of 2020, for the end of this year, would be to be at 30%. We think we're, we're confident we'll be there because of things that are, are happening on the system. But we would have been there already if, if Metapelli had not uh, messed around with Pune Geothermal. And the other reason it's exciting news is that uh, two other things, really. First of all, last 2019, mm. as we all know, was a very hot year. And uh, the, the heat continued well into, uh, into October, I guess. And that meant more air conditioning was being used. So our sales overall were up, which is not a good thing for this company. Most companies would be excited about that. It's not a good thing for us. When the sales go up, then our renewable portfolio standard, which is a percentage of, of that, could go down. But even though the sales went up because of that use, uh, our RPS went up. And one more factor is that uh, wind fell off last year. Uh, we're not sure exactly why. I, I think you could probably generally say climate change is affecting our wind patterns. Again, we all experience the hot weather, a lot of, of uh, uh, what we used to call Kona winds, uh, a lot of uh, wind that wasn't just flowing in the normal way. So there was less wind generated on our systems. So we had no geothermal, less wind, and more sales, more air conditioning being used. And we still were able to go up by uh, almost 2%, 1.7%, uh, almost two percentage points. And um, you know that's good news all around. We've got a goal of 30% by the end of this year. And as I said, we're, very, we're confident we're gonna make it. Uh, rooftop solar was up last year, 21, and overall solar was up 21%. Uh, because of some new projects that came online, including the Westlock project, including the Clearway uh, projects, 110 megawatts. Uh, Hamakua uh, Energy Partners started using biodiesel uh, from Pacific Biodiesel, so a good uh, chunk of their generation now counts as renewable. So the overall message is we're moving in the right direction, and we're moving there uh, perhaps not quite as quickly as we hope, but we're still, uh, you know, moving forward at a good pace. So, so that's our, interesting. The trend. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, that's our that's our good news for today. Well, it's interesting to translate that those two or three percentages into actual kilowatt hours because the kilowatt hours represented one or two percent is a tremendous amount of uh, additional energy. Right. The, the overall additional energy generated is about 6.7%. Uh, I could tell you the numbers, but, you, it, you know, they're, they, they, my mind gets confused. But, we, you know, between the rooftop solar and the solar uh, energy from uh, big, big uh, uh, farms and wind and, and uh, waste to energy and everything, we had a fairly dramatic increase in, in the total amount of renewable generation 
in generated in our, our service territory in Hawaii in the last, in 2019. And considering all the things that were going against us, that's pretty good news. And you've got some other uh, big um, uh, PV projects going to be coming online in the next two or three years as well. So that's right. We are uh, making really good moves here. I think we're going to see, uh, first of all, we signed a bunch of contracts late last year that will start coming online toward the end of this year. We're about in May to announce another staunch of, uh, of probably mostly solar, but maybe some other kinds of projects, uh, perhaps as much as another 900 megawatts of, of uh, renewable energy projects. So we definitely are, are moving. We're, we think we're going to be well ahead of our, uh, our milestones uh, but as, as they come along. Uh, the last part may be the toughest part, of course. Uh, you know, sure. <laughs> just like that when you run the marathon, everything seems to be going fine until you're about a quarter mile from the, from the finish line, <laughs> and then you, uh, <laughs> you realize how much trouble you're in. But, you know, we can't get there. We'll deal with that when we get to that, but we can't get there without these steps that we're taking right now. And it's sure. a combination of customers and the solar industry putting more and more panels on the roofs. Uh, we have, I think, and then uh, 3.5 million panels total in the state, which, uh, you know, it's kind of wow. mind boggling in this state. So combination of customers and the companies like Clearway, uh, Hawaiian Electric owns the West Lock. We, we didn't install it, but we own it and operate it. Uh, so the big solar farms are coming in. Uh, the wind farms, we are expecting one at least to come online in the next year or so. Uh, so, you know, there's no way we're not moving in the right direction. And it's recognized. People uh, talk about us. We were named Utility of the Year last year, as you know. Uh, Rocky Mountain Institute just, uh, you know, which is an independent think tank and consultancy. They just came out with a 92-page uh, booklet saying here's how Hawaii does it and here's how other people should do it. Uh, across the country, around the world, we're recognized for really incredible uh, steps. And uh, the, the part that you can't see, the grid and the, the systems that run the grid, we're working on those too. We have an integrated uh, grid uh, planning system that's coming into place. We're modernizing the grid. We're improving the computer software and hardware. We're improving the communication between the various uh, parts of the system. Uh, those are not so visible, but they're absolutely essential to getting to this goal that we have. And so, you know, despite setbacks, despite uh, the wind not blowing when you want it, despite, uh, you know, cloudy weather, we're, we're getting there. And I think everybody in Hawaii should be proud. We're glad to be part of it. We're, we're, you couldn't do it without Hawaiian Electric, but Hawaiian Electric can't do it by itself either. It depends on a lot of people, government, business, institutions, the university, a lot of people, uh, you know, the analogy is kind of old, but we're all paddling in a canoe and we're all paddling in the same direction. That's good. That's great. Well, that's a great. Thanks very much, Peter. Pleasure. Uh, it's good, good to see segue you. Into, yes, to our next guest, uh, Keith Avery from West Wind Works. Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I have a TV show based on my book, which is also called Beyond the Lines. And it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and building winning teams. We are having a fun drive for Think Tech Hawaii. And please, 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 please help us keep these shows going. Please go on our website, thinktechhawaii.com, to donate. Thank you. Here we are, back from our break, and I'm here with our second guest of the afternoon, Keith Avery, president of West Wind Works. I like that play on West Wind Working. Keith, welcome to the show. Thank and you. And I'd like you're a lot, I've known you for a long time, like 15 years, and you're one of the pioneers of uh, wind energy here in Hawaii. 
Okay, give us just a little quick uh, thumbnail uh, background of how you start out in Hawaii until we're, where we are today, and then we can talk about today and the future of wind. Hi, Mitch. Thanks uh, for having me. And uh, I started doing wind energy in 1981 uh, with uh, Wind Power Pacific, and we installed the first wind turbines at Kahua Ranch. It was the uh, largest amount of, of uh, wind uh, turbines ever put in, even though they were only 15 kilowatts. Uh, today, uh, Siemens is looking at a five megawatt ground turbine. So we started small and then we uh, moved to uh, doing projects on, on the outer islands, uh, including Maui at Kahiawa Pastures, at Javi, which was another wind farm that was going to update the Kahoa Ranch uh, wind farm. But it was then sold to EDF Renewables, and uh, they operate the Javi wind farm. And, um, and lately, I've been working on the uh, Oahu uh, projects. Um, I originated uh, the Kahuku wind farm as uh, well as the Napua Makani wind farm. And um, what I do is I originate the projects, I prospect uh, for the wind, uh, we install uh, anemometry to, to collect long-term wind resource data. Uh, and then we go to the community and ask for permission uh, to put up a project, and noting that they take anywhere from three to five uh, the Kahuku project, uh, because I lost control of it, uh, it ended up taking almost 10 years. And um, and today, um, wind is is the cheapest renewable energy available in probably the world. Solar is very cheap, and uh, we're replacing coal. The only issue with coal is that it gives you firm power and wind energy gives you power when the wind blows. And so we're solving that problem through storage, which HECO is now adopting uh, energy storage with their uh, wind projects uh, in, in order to make wind more dispatched. Right. So let's talk a little bit about the wind situation in Hawaii. I mean, you said you're a prospector and prospecting for wind sites. Kind of like a gold miner panning for gold. Mm -hmm. So how are we doing? Like uh, Oahu, uh, what's the status of wind on Oahu? Are there any more gold mines to be found on Oahu, or what are we going to do? Um, well, I, ironically, um, we are we are blessed with renewable resources in wind and and, and solar on all our islands. Uh, the issue for Oahu is we have a million people here in a small island, and when you put wind energy up in the uh, the hills, uh, in the mountain areas where the wind typically blows better, um, you have more of a view plane for those wind turbines, and it impacts more people. And so, hitting on the theme of today's uh, discussion is wind a, a foe or, or a friend. It is actually uh, our best friend. And Hawaiians have been using the wind from the beginning of time uh, and their time. And they sailed here using the power of the wind. They have hundreds of names uh, for the wind from, uh, from where it blows from, uh, which island it's on, what direction, which valley, what intensity, what season, all, all different kinds of uh, uh, names for, for the wind and appreciation for, for what it does for us. So on the outer islands, we have a great opportunity to become 100% self-sufficient with wind and storage. And we could do that probably easily within 10 years and, and probably will do it within five to seven. The uh, outer islands have smaller loads. Um, they also have higher penetrations of renewables. I think they're in the 40 and 50% compared to the overall state of 28%. So what we're gonna see is wind play an integral part 
the friendly part of the outer islands, there's more land, so less view impacts. The faux part is the view impact. Um, if you if you move to a place and there are wind turbines already there, you adopt to them and you accept them. If they're not there, just like transmission lines, if they're not there and you move in and then somebody wants to put those in, you have an issue with it. It's about change. And when we put up a wind turbine now, and they are very large, um, it does have a visual impact. What we do see is after a year or two years, people have, have accepted and um, the view issue typically goes away and the, uh, the benefits of the renewables uh, step forward. So we were uh, talking yesterday or earlier yesterday about you know, talking about view planes. You know, people are really accepting of basically a power line. And if you drive around the island, you see all these telephone, what I call them telephone poles or power poles, with uh, stacks of wires on them. And, you know, you kind of really, like you said, you, you don't kind of even know they're there because you kind of tuned it out of your brain. Now, maybe if you're buying a high-end house in a, in a master plan community, and like you said, you're just moving in, you're very aware of it, but uh, it's like, like you said, you get used to it, and then you kind of dial it out of your brain. Um, so how can we get wind power to market? Here's the, I mean, we... We have the neighbor yeah. islands with really good uh, wind resources and lots of land, and here we are in Oahu. We're almost maxed out for you know some good gold mines here. How do we get the wind from the neighbor island over to this huge market here on Oahu that really needs the wind but doesn't have available land? So is there a, a way to do that without? I mean, we've looked at cables and we saw how that went, but mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on that? So um, it, it's a, a pretty exciting time for renewable energy um, in the world, and Hawaii can actually be the leader. Uh, we initiated a lead position um, by making a goal of 100% renewable for electricity by 2045. As I mentioned earlier, on the outer islands, we should be able to do that much sooner. And the way that we're going to do that, and we can do that, is is we have to add storage. Today, storage is is typically batteries, uh, battery banks put in containers, um, and that holds a short-term storage. That short-term storage will not take us to the goal of 100% renewable. So we need something uh, that has a better storage uh, framework. So there are new technologies, molten salt and um, uh, electrothermal uh, batteries that uh, convert renewables into heat and the heat into steam, and then we can run firm power out of the, that storage mechanism. Very cost effective, more cost effective than the battery. And then to get us to 100% renewables, what we're looking at and what West Wind Works has been dedicated to and for the last 15 years is to make renewable hydrogen. And it is as simple as you take wind energy or solar and water, you split the water atom into uh, hydrogen and oxygen, and then using space technology, we reconvert the hydrogen with the oxygen and we get a spark and we get water. That spark comes out of what's called a fuel cell. And to convert the water into hydrogen, we use an electrolyzer. Those two components now have dropped in price um, over 70% in the last three to five years and have now made renewable hydrogen from wind more economical than using fossil fuel, natural gas, which is our main source of, of hydrogen today. The great thing about the hydrogen is we can, using wind, we can fix the price for up to 20 years. We have zero emissions and we are 
um, a local resource. And so we are basically gold mining or green mining, if you want to use that term, oh, that um, term. because we're um, we're basically making money out of the air. It's it, as crazy as that sounds. We don't have to pay for fuel. We don't have to use wires anymore. So we're really going to have renewable hydrogen creating wireless electricity, and we will distribute it through tanks, uh, storage tanks, or uh, pipeline systems to the various customers. A side part of that is, I'm just thinking offhand because the winds were blowing so hard out here on the North Shore, um, it took out our catamaran and my cabana. Um, so we won't have an issue of taking out power lines if we have a hurricane or big storms because the hydrogen will be in pipes and tanks and we we won't need those wires anymore. So the other uh, benefit, of course, of uh, hydrogen uh, at uh, scale, we call it scale because it's large storage, is, is also uh, can be applied to our transportation system so that you can essentially convert all your vehicles over to fuel cell electric vehicles. Uh, they still have batteries in them and they can still use uh, you know power from the grid as well. Uh, but uh, instead of having these massive amounts of hydrogen just building up at some point, you can say, well, I can use some of that to feed my transportation system. Uh, we're doing that on the Big Island. We're trying to convert the Big Island bus system uh, over to uh, hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles or hydrogen electric buses, and we'll see how that goes. Um, uh, one question I had, I brought it up to you or prepping for the show was, what about a trade-off between smaller wind turbines that don't affect the view plane as much as these massive, you know, the five megawatts uh, and up uh, turbines that we're going today? I mean, I understand that uh, you want to get as much out of that patch of land as possible, but is there a trade-off that can be made? Can you comment on that, Keith? Um, yeah, it, if you if you use smaller wind turbines, obviously there's going to be more. And the way the, the wind blows, the wind closest to the ground uh, receives friction, and that slows that wind down. So if you are 100 feet above the ground, your resource is going to be much less than it is if it's 300 feet. So we gain wind speed as we, as we uh, go up higher, and... Um, that's the reason for, for the tall towers and the, the big rotors. So the bigger the rotor, the more energy we capture, and then we turn at a, a much slower RPM, um, which helps in the view plane and also helps to, uh, to maintain the, the, the integrity of, of the turbine itself. So um, smaller turbine is just a bigger profile um, uh, and, and not as much power, so do, just it's much easier to put in a, a large wind turbine. For instance, for Molokai, we could put in two turbines, two three megawatt turbines, um, and maybe a third turbine for making hydrogen all day and storing that, firming up the other two turbines, and now we have Molokai 100% um, renewable. The added bonus, as you mentioned, is that we get a transportation fuel out of this also. So the goal of Hawaii's 100% renewables by 2045 only gets us 25% reduction in imported fossil fuels. We're gonna, we, we use um, the fossil fuels um, mostly for, for transportation, jet fuels, uh, et cetera, military fuels. And, um, by using the uh, renewable hydrogen, we get a zero emissions fuel that's based here that will not only run our cars and buses, but would actually be able to operate the rail as well as the jets and, and boats, et cetera. Everything can ultimately run on hydrogen. Yeah, I hear that GE has uh, actually got a, a, a gas turbine now. There are gas turbines that run on hydrogen or mixtures of uh, natural gas and hydrogen. It's just to get the carbon content down. 
Also, it's a much lighter weight fuel, so like for the uh, aircraft, they can carry more payload because their the weight of the fuel isn't quite as much. So we're coming towards the end of our session. I told you this would go fast. So uh, I want to leave it open to you, Keith, uh, to give us any final thoughts you have on on wind, uh, wind, friend, or foe, and on hydrogen, or anything you want to uh, bring out that we may not have uh, touched. Um, yeah, I, I think that our main goal and, and the main uh, purpose of West Wind Works was to promote the renewable hydrogen, and not only for Hawaii, but for, for our world. Um, the way we're going, uh, I heard this morning the Antarctic at 64 degrees, um, the highest temperature ever recorded there. Um, we're, we're basically warming up the atmosphere so much on our planet that we're having, of course, climate change. And our only solution, and our only solution for Hawaii, because we need a gas to, to give us firm power. Hawaiian Electric is going to use liquid natural gas imported um, for the next 20 years until they actually get to the renewable hydrogen. They've shown great interest in this. Uh, concept, so I think they look forward to the first demonstration projects that, that we're looking forward to, uh, to doing. Um, but the whole purpose is really to, um, to show the world that Hawaii is the leader uh, in renewable energy. We're 2,500 miles away from everywhere. We've been importing uh, fuel uh, for many years, although our initial effort for energy came from sugarcane, and we were totally indigenous and self-sufficient. So that's where we're heading back, and we're going to do that at the lowest prices using green uh, fuel and green money, and um, and then we're going to uh, create a zero emissions uh, energy source that will then be used worldwide. Well, that's great. I uh, really uh, appreciate uh, your uh, leadership in this area, Keith, and your drive and determination to do the right thing and clean up the atmosphere. And you know, you've known this uh, solution for years and years and years. And uh, it's now, uh, I think, uh, you know, I feel that uh, we're finally getting to the point where people are going to start recognizing it, and all of a sudden, uh, you're going to become uh, wow. We just thought about hydrogen now. I mean, and you've been doing it for at least. Uh, 18 to 20 years, as long as I've known you, for sure, anyway. But Keith, thank you so much. Appreciate it. And uh, this is uh, Mitch Ewan, the host of Hawaii State of Clean Energy, signing off until next Wednesday. And thank you. And if you like this video, please send it out to your network of all your friends. And Keith, we'll make sure we put on uh, your contact if people want to get hold of you uh, when they post-produce uh, this, uh, this episode. So aloha, everyone. See you next Wednesday.